I am embarrassed to admit this, but I used to chase recognition for other people to respect me so that I could justify just being me to myself. I also chased making money so I could get more freedom in my life. I wish there were 48 hours in a day so I had more time to chase it all. 14 years ago, my life changed completely. I became a mother to my son, Philip. He was born blind and his optical nerves are malfunctioning. He's autistic and has minor brain damage as well. He doesn't understand the difference between the past, the present or the future. He's only capable of being in the now. Over the past 14 years, I had to learn a lot and I've learned so much from Philip. So today, I'd like to share with you the three tools to success my disabled son taught me. For Philip, it's important that there is structure in our everyday life and that our routines are recognizable. The more predictable his world is, the calmer he is. Philip senses the world more extremely than I do. By increasing his other senses, he quickly gets overstimulated by being around other people. He manages to be in a crowded room, but only for a short amount of time. Then he must step back, be alone, to self-regulate and calm his nerv nervous system. If he doesn't get this alone time, he can stay awake for days with no sleep at all because he's so overstimulated. Imagine his world is like a can of soda. Every sound, every smell, every emotion is like shaking the can. And after a while, the can will have built up so much pressure. When you or I feel the pressure of our lives building up, we have the abilities and the tools to calm ourselves down again naturally. We can eat, drink, sleep, meditate, or even go for a walk. Philip cannot. Since Philip has heightened senses, he also picks up on the emotional state of the people he meets. He senses if they are stressed or calm, loving or angry, and he mirrors and reflects their state of mind. If they are upset, he gets upset. I always thought it was fun that I had my personal emotion detector whenever we met other people. Throughout the years, it became clear to me that Philip also mirrors me. When I discovered this, I knew it was of great importance. What can I feel and think for him to be balanced and happy? When he seems stressed, I always ask myself first, am I the one who's stressed these days? Have I made too many plans without even noticing it? And is Philip helping me to see this? 99% of the time, I am the one who's stressed and not him. Therefore, the first important th thing Philip taught me was only to be in the now. When I am present and in the now with him, I feel a freedom that is indescribable. From there, I sense life itself. I hear things, I smell things, and I see things together with him that feels like a meditative state of mind. Before I had Philip, freedom to me was being able to quit my job and live on an island where I didn't have to chase time or money. In my imagination, freedom was a safe haven where I could feel at ease. Now I experience freedom every day with him for free. This is because I have experienced that freedom is an emotion. Philip taught me that freedom is something we all have access to if we claim it and focus on it every day. When Philip turned six months old, his eyesight started to develop. I remember this clearly because I stuck the tongue out of my mouth and then he suddenly did the same. He mirrored me. I always knew that where focus goes, energy flows. I wanted to develop his abilities through focus, training and hard work. He has limited eyesight today, 14 years later, but he's able to use his digital tablet, watch TV, use a cell phone and read 
if he sees in large letters in contrasting colors like black on yellow or red on white. His doctors often ask us, how did you do this? The answer, by focusing on one thing at a time. Before he had that visionary breakthrough, I often thought of how I was able to help him bring his world to life without causing him further stress than he already felt by overcompensating all the time. The second thing Philip taught me was that development must always take place from a safe place in his life. He taught me that with success comes more success, but one step at a time. I learned that the way I could develop him and open his world had to be from a safe place that needed to be recognizable to him and where he had felt or experienced already success there and of course had naturally gotten more self-motivated and more self-confident. From there I knew I was able to take him to a whole different level. Since Philip didn't have any language I needed to understand him in a whole different way. I needed to understand, I needed to almost become him using my empathic skills to read him and understand him completely. He experiences his world by seeing a situation as a picture or a frame in front of his inner eyes combined with an emotion. This can be going to school with an emotion of it being a safe, funny, or interesting place to be. The same thing goes for meeting a dog. This can be scary because the dog is unpredictable in his world because it moves around him in circles where he can't see it. And the dog can suddenly make loud noises. Preparing Philip for new situations like these give him the courage to do it and opens his world without him feeling stressed or feeling, feeling a resilience to it. Through our little method of focusing from a successful place, we constantly experience the energy flows to even more successful experiences. And because of this, we never argue. To give you an example, Philip prefers to eat food that is recognizable to him. If you consider food as a component, then imagine that a cracker is a one component food product because it's the same on the inside as on the, as on the outside. Whereas a tomato is a three component food product because it consists of the tomato skin, flesh and seeds. I couldn't cheat him and blend the foods into his meals. He tasted it or felt the different texture immediately when I did. To make him eat a variety of food, I had to go back to what he knew. I had to go back to where he felt successful. I knew he liked a cracker, so how could I make him eat bread with salami on top? First, I started to bake the bread in the oven with olive oil and salt on it, so it felt like a hard cracker. And after weeks, I put it on the toaster instead and made the bread softer and softer. Today, he can eat bread with salami on top, and it is his favorite part of his lunch now. I spent one and a half years on maternity leave with Philip. Because of our situation and numerous examinations of his disabilities at hospitals, it truly made me see his world. I could suddenly hear things far away that I never noticed before, and I got an increased sense of smell too. Because Philip can only be in the now, he taught me about only existing from there. You can say that I emptied myself from everything I knew, everything I felt, and everything I thought, like my limited beliefs. I had to start all over with him and create a life where our surroundings had to suit him, not the other way around. This included not having a regular job or him going to kindergarten from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. It dawned on me that this was an opportunity that could result in my biggest success, success yet for both of us. So the third thing Philip taught me was to receive new things. We had to make room for them. 
Let me take you back to 2008 during the global financial crisis. It wasn't the safest time for me to quit my job, give up my regular paycheck to become a business owner with no paycheck at all. Yet I knew that Philip left me with no choice. He would be way too overstimulated if he had to have a long day surrounded by other people. I knew that I had to take control over our own time. I felt that it seemed impossible to become a business owner while I had a regular job. What would I risk to dare taking a leap of faith? I knew that I had to quit my job and make room for my upcoming business and not the other way around. If I had kept my regular job, I would never have had the time nor the energy to build it up. After only four months and a lot of focus on finding my niche, I had enough clients to pay myself not just a regular paycheck, but more than I'd ever had before. I have worked as a therapist, coach and animal communicator for several years now. Becoming more intuitive with Philip has also made me a greater listener. It helped me to develop my empathic abilities so I felt what it was like being another person, not just by understanding people, but by connecting with them on a deeper level. In my opinion, the hardest part on helping other people professionally is never to project my own experiences, opinions, or advice onto them. Instead, you must listen and help them to find the answers within themselves. Philip helped me in doing just that. In 2020, it was time to move into a bigger place with Philip during the COVID pandemic. The property prices had skyrocketed. At first, I forgot <laughs> that I had to empty our lives to make room for more. So I scouted a lot of new residences for Philip and me. Every single time I wanted to purchase a new home for us, the deal went sideways. Then I suddenly rem remembered that I had to make room for a successful situation to create an even greater successful one. I decided to put my home up for sale I knew it was of great risk because it would be very stressful for Philip if we had to move into a temporary rental, if we had no place to live, even for a short while. I knew we could only move once. Our old place was sold in one week. It was the highest sales price our community had ever seen. The number was so high they wrote an article about it in the local newspaper. Only a few days later, I signed a contract on our new home. Thankfully, there was enough time for Philip to see our new home before we eventually moved. I made sure he had a transitional phase from one home to the other. I made sure to move his things at a slow pace so he was constantly able to recognize his things, even though they were in a brand new place. I made sure to buy groceries, so there were always things he loved in the fridge. And of course, plenty of crackers and bread with salami on top. <laughs> on the day we moved into our new apartment, the country suddenly went into lockdown. I didn't have to panic since everything was already taken care of. The stress and anxiety that I experienced during the lockdown around us never hit him. He was safe. He could feel that I was calm, so he was calm too. To live in the now, I can say this, use your senses and be aware of them. You don't have to go for a walk or meditate to use them. Right now, from where you're sitting or standing, sense what you are feeling in your body. Are you able to feel your toes and heels? Listen to noises around you. What can you hear? Use your sense of smell. What do you smell? What do you see in front of you and around you? And just by doing this, you're present in your now. To practice getting more success from prior success, think of a problem you have right now. It can be 
job related, family related, a friend or a spouse. Now think of a situation from your past where you felt the same emotion as you do right now, even though the situations are probably not similar or even related. It could be an emotion from being misunderstood, not feeling appreciated, not feeling loved, or if you t were taken for granted. How did you solve the problem the last time? What did you do to succeed? You have access to a great number of abilities inside you. You can reconnect with your emotions again and turn them into actions. To receive new things, you must make room for them. Think about something you want, a wish or desire right now. It can be a new job position, a relationship, a new house, or something else that will make your life feel more abundant. Then think about what have you done to make room for it? Do you have the time for the things that will follow if you get it right now? Are you willing to work less to quit your job to make room for your new job position? Or are you tired enough of your current situation so that you're willing to quit your job? If you spend nine hours a day on a job, how will you be able to search for a new one? Do you have the energy to do it while working for another company? And are you honestly open for a new relationship? Do you have the courage to connect with another person and be in a relationship with honesty and trust that will develop the both of you? Think about which areas in your life you're willing to let go of to make room for new situations to happen. I recommend focusing on one thing at a time. We can all learn from Philip. We can learn that success comes to us when we have the courage and the knowledge to repeat our actions, which creates success repeatedly and on a wider scale. We can learn not to focus on the things we lack in our lives, but we can be thankful for being able to find the time and the space to receive new things instead. Philip continues to teach me new lessons all the time. Some of these lessons are wonderful gifts, some are hard challenges, but in all of them, our connection and understanding grow stronger. So remember today and always, make room for new things, develop from your safe place, and be in the now. Thank you.